There are a lot of ways today that Christians can believe that they're on the right track as they wait. But they're actually not on the right track at all. And all of these shortcuts are the same. Promising a shortcut, a detour, a better way than the same old quote-unquote plodding way that God wants us to be on. Now, there are many ways that this shoe could fit in your life, and I leave it to you to ponder that in your own context. But I want to give you one bright and shining example of how we as Christians here in America can believe we're on the right track and we're staying the course and being faithful, but we've actually totally forgotten what the Christian faith is supposed to be about. I received this letter in the mail this week. This letter in the mail is from the Faith and Freedom Coalition. This is a coalition run, this is a political committee run by a gentleman named Ralph Reed. He's been in Republican politics for a very long time. He first came into, came into his own in the, uh, an organization called the Christian Coalition in the early 90s. Pat Robertson hired him to begin that and be a Christian advocacy group. And now he is still around and he has the Faith and Freedom Coalition. He sent this propaganda mailer in the mail and the entire focus of this mailer is to make Christians afraid and make you angry. In 1999, Cal Thomas and Ed Dobson, not James Dobson, but Ed Dobson, wrote a wonderful book about their experiences as part of the moral majority in the 1980s, fighting alongside Jerry Falwell to fight for Christian values in the public square. And the entire book was about how they realized that that was a hopeless mission that will never come to pass and that the gospel is the only thing that the church should be involved in. The gospel and its implications for your personal life and that is what the church needs to do. And that the political action committees and all the politicking and all the deal making and all the strategizing and all the congressional seats, all the Senate seats, all the House seats, all the Supreme Court seats, all of that effort and money expended was missing it, accomplished nothing. That's what they concluded. And they said this in 1999. I'm going to read you what they said. If you were to do a content analysis of the fundraising letters of the religious right, you would discover they are all basically the same, regardless of the organization. Number one, they identify an enemy, homosexuals, abortionists, Democrats, whoever. Second, the enemies are accused of being out to get us or to impose their morality in the rest of the country. Third, the letter assures the reader that they will do something about it. Fourth, to get the job done, please send money. This letter, 40 years on, is precisely that. 40 years on, Christians are still tempted to lose focus on what God wants them to do. To deviate course, to chase a pot of political gold that is never going to materialize. The four things that they said Fun, fundraising letters contain. First, identify an enemy. Tyler, we need to register six million new conservative Christian voters for the all-important 2022 midterm congressional elections so we can stop the radical left from destroying America forever. Identify an enemy, number one. Number two, identify the threat. These midterm House and Senate elections will decide whether or not America survives as a land of the free or is destroyed forever by the radical left. If this happens, a conservative will never win the presidency again because the left will change the rules to ensure permanent power for the left. America will quickly become a corrupt one-party socialist state. Number two, identify the threat. They're going to kill us all. Identify the threat. Cause fear. Number three, assure them that you will fight you are going to fight for them. If we succeed, it will likely make the difference between victory and defeat in 2022, between saving the America you love and losing America forever. Ralph Reed will save you. Number four, give me money. If we can double what we did in 2020, in 2022, we will have a chance to save this great nation for your children and grandchildren, but we need donations to do this. Will you give $100, Tyler? Only you know what you're able to contribute. If every Christian who reads this letter chips in with a donation, I'm confident we will succeed and stop the radical left from destroying America forever.
This, I use this as one example among many, just one among many, it's not the only example, and it may have nothing to do with you. This is an example of not staying on course. This is an example of Christianity being used as a political prop. Christ is a lucky charm in Ralph Reed's pocket, the pretty picture on the cereal box that he's selling. This isn't Christianity. If your passion, for example, and you can make the shoe fit wherever you like, if your passion is hating Democrats and the left, sooner or later you'll realize you don't have to be a Christian to do that. You don't even need to come to church to do that. Haggai preached about, among other things, the Israelites are shifting to materialism and their faith is on autopilot. They're going through the motions. They really don't care about God. And even though they're there and they're in their seats and everyone's here, God says, you guys, you guys need to stop. You guys need to stop. And then chapter 8, he says, look at what's waiting for you. So now can't you, can't you be about what you're supposed to be about? Don't get sidetracked. Don't go on autopilot. Don't take the shortcut that looks good. Don't chase the shiny thing about how if we elect enough people in the midterms, everything will be fine. Ten years from now, Ralph Reed's only 59. Ten years from now, some other guy is going to get another letter saying the same thing and nothing will have changed. Why don't we stay on course? What about us? How do we have mission drift? How have we taken a shortcut and we don't even realize it? Are you continuing on route? Are we continuing on route, following the GPS's directions? 